सर वी आर लाइव स्टार्ट करते हैं Bismillahirrahmanirrahim uh, my name is dr faisal zahur and i'm a graduate of uh, frontier medical and dental college uh, and uh, currently working as a house officer at uh, islamic international dental hospital islamabad so uh, today i'm going to talk about uh, the composite restoration and uh, the content that uh, i'll be dealing with uh, first of all is the introduction first of all is the introduction of uh, composite uh, resin uh, then the composition of it and classification and uh, the polymerization of the composite and i'll talk about a uh, little bit uh, uh, the indications contraindication advantages and disadvantages uh, then the enamel and dentin bonding then the classification of uh, adhesion and uh, the final is the forbidden art which is the finishing and polishing so let's get started with the introduction of composite it's it's just a brief introduction so it was a polymeric dental restorative material it was reinforced with the inorganic particle and was developed in 1962 by uh, the scientist named bowen which was termed as uh, the composite later on so if we talk about the composition of uh, composite it is described as uh, the dispersed phase mixed into the continuous phase so the dispersed phase is the filler the inorganic filler and the continuous phase is the um, the matrix so the composition is uh, actually the matrix phase which is the continuous phase the saline coupling agent and the photo initiator okay i'll be talking about them uh, one by one so in the matrix phase uh, it consists of the difunctional monomer like the bis gamma which is the uh, product of the reaction between bis uh, bis phenol a and uh, glycidyl methacrylate and the udma which is the urethane dimethacrylate these two components are uh, more viscous and the uh, I'm sorry. These two components are less viscous, and this uh, the third, third one is uh, which is the tetraethylene glycol dimethacrylate. This is the less uh, viscous, which is also added uh, to the uh, bis gamma and UDMA to decrease the uh, to increase the viscosity. So this this is the matrix phase. Now we'll talk about the inorganic fillers. <clears throat> okay so we we'll talk about the inorganic fillers these fillers are uh, produced by using the modified silicate glass okay so the reason for uh, using the modified silicate glass is uh, because it acts uh, excellent with the coupling agent which i will discuss in the later slide so um, i'll show you there what i meant by this and the second thing is uh, a few ions are incorporated uh, to change the properties of it for example uh, the lithium and uh, aluminum um, ion these are uh, incorporated uh, to uh, generate small particles because these ion help uh, the glass grinded at the, the smaller particles and the other ions are the barium and zinc boron and zirconium these are uh, used for the radio opacity okay now here is the uh, saline coupling agent it is uh, important to understand this concept okay so first of all it provides the bonding between the filler between the filler and the matrix let me if i show you okay these are the difunctional molecules i hope you can hear me better um it is a difunctional molecule and then uh, i would like to explain what is the difunctional molecule a difunctional molecule is uh, a molecule which has uh, two ends imagine two uh, highly reactive ends 
So at, at the one end, uh, the hydroxyl group of filler, which is a silicate particle, it attaches itself to the saline coupling agent. And the other end uh, copolymerizes with the double bond of the monomer uh, to the saline uh, coupling agent. So it, it acts as a, it acts as an intermediate uh, for bonding between the filler and the matrix uh, component of the composite. I hope that uh, explains pretty much. So the photo initiator. So before uh, the photo initiator, there were two paste systems, just like uh, we been using with the zinc oxide eugenol. So we have two paste. We mix it together and then we apply it to the cavity. So it has its own limitations and uh, uh, which I will discuss later in the slides. So uh, the photo initiator, the most uh, of the composite that are we using in nowadays, are they are polymerized with the help of the light. And it used the chemical uh, known as uh, camphor. It uses the chemical that names is the, the camphoroquinone, which is a photo initiator. And it starts, it, it activates itself at the wavelength of 470 nanometer. It absorbs light at uh, 470 nanometer and start the polymerization. Okay. Now we have uh, talked about the composition of the composite, which are the um, matrix, the inorganic uh, filler, and uh, the photo initiator and the saline coupling agent. Now we are here at the classification. It is classified on the basis of the filler type and on the basis of uh, matrix composition and the basis of uh, polymerization method. Either it's uh, a light cure com uh, composite or it's a chemical uh, cure composite or it could be both. And then the last one is the based on viscosity. Is it a flowable or it's um, uh, a packable composite? So uh, based on the filler particles, there were a lot of uh, uh, the composite types that were introduced uh, back in 1960 uh, to, uh, to the 1980s. There are the macrofills, then the midifills, then the minifills, then the microfills, uh, having the different diameters of uh, the filler particles. So the macrofills, it uh, contains, it has the larger diameters of the particles. Uh, which, you know, uh, interfere with its um, its physical properties. Like uh, the macrofill has the uh, rough uh, surface texture as compared to the microfill. Because in the, uh, and it, it, it is more susceptible to the plaque accumulation and the extrinsic uh, staining. Whereas the microfill, it has uh, the smaller diameter of the filler particle and it is uh, more polishable so there is minimal chance of uh, plaque accumulation and extrinsic uh, staining and uh, the other is based on based on composition which is uh, again best gamma comp based composites and udma based composite then based on the polymerization method the light cure composite uh, the Okay. The light cure composite, the chemical cure composite, which is uh, which comes in two paste system where you combine both of uh, the paste to form the homogeneous uh, mixture and then apply it to the cavity. So the main problem with that uh, chemical cure composite was uh, you have a little working time, you know, to work with. You have a, a, a small amount of time to work with uh, because it sets at a very faster rate and the humidity and the temperature that also affects it. And the second thing is that when you apply it to the cavity, it might incorporate the oxygen particles um, and maybe it weakens the bond between the tooth and the composite. And then it is based on the viscosity. It is a packable composite and in flowable composite. Now, flowable composite, uh, which I have already mentioned that uh, tag dema, uh, which is uh, less, which is more viscous, more flowable uh, than the other two. So it has the greater polymerization shrinkage. So this is the classification. Now the polymerization of the composite. 
like the uh, it has the influence of the substrate then the configuration of factor which is uh, the c factor and uh, the in the discovery of the new composites development of the new composites and the new techniques by which you can reduce the uh, polymerization of shrinkage so first is uh, the influence of substrate which is uh, which is described as uh, the polymerization shrinkage uh, occurs in <clears throat> okay so polymerization it occurs at the source of the light so um, how many times you have seen uh, like you have completed a root canal treatment right and you have uh, filled the cavity with composite uh, restoration and after uh, curing it uh, when you have done the x-rays uh, and it comes out uh, like this as you can see this is a black uh, blackish area between the root fillings and the composite filling is uh, there is a black area which refer as uh, the result of uh, uh, composite as uh, polymerization shrinkage you can see here in this second picture and in this now to overcome uh, this uh, problem uh, well this this thing can lead to the micro leakage and ultimately leading to the failure of root canal treatment um, it doesn't matter if it happens uh, two years later or ten years later it will be considered as a failure so to uh, to minimize this there are a few certain few things that you can do it is the uh, first thing is you can apply the resin modified uh, glass ionomer as a base so you can avoid the uh, micro leakage the seepage of bacteria into the root canal system and the second thing you can uh, do uh, is uh, place the composite in increments which can reduce the polymerization shrinkage and the third thing is uh, that we cannot do it uh, on our own but it's the production companies that can do they can uh, incorporate the smaller size of the particles and the increase the amount of filler particles and decreasing the size of filler particles uh, as it is seen in the hybrid composite, which is a uh, uh, mini micro hybrid, which, is, which gives the property of both macro composite, macrofill and microfill. Macrofill has the uh, strength and uh, the micro one has the, um, the polishability and uh, the thing that it cannot get be accumulated by uh, the plug then comes the configuration of uh, factor the C factor is defined as uh, the ratio of bounded and unbounded surfaces so the higher the number of uh, C factor the higher will be the polymerization shrinkage so in class one uh, there is uh, five to one ratio and the number is uh, still five which is higher and as compared to the class uh, four cavity which has uh, the only one unbounded uh, surface and the four unbounded surface so it has the, uh, the ratio of around 0 0.125 which is uh, which is very less than that so it will have the less um, polymerization shrinkage so the near composite and the techniques as i have shown here there are a few things that you can do you have uh, heard about the slow start that you cure the composite at the uh, lower wavelength of uh, the light and then increasing it to the higher intensity uh, that can uh, also help in the polymerization shrinkage the second thing is uh, the increasing the number of uh, filler particles and decreasing the diameter the size of the filler particle that will also in, uh, help in the uh, polymerization shrinkage and the third thing is uh, um, okay 
and the third thing is that you can use uh, the resin modified uh, composite uh, glass enamel cement uh, as a base or you can use the flowable composite and so to avoid the micro leakage or micro seepage in the root canal system as you can see in this picture is the result of the polymerization shrinkage and in this picture they have used either flowable composite or the resin modified glass animal cement to uh, to reduce the effect of polymerization shrinkage okay Okay, so I'll uh, be talking a little bit about uh, about the indications, contraindications, and uh, okay, the indications, the contraindications. The indication is you can use it in in uh, any class you want, class one, class two, um, three, four, five, and six. You can use it for the core buildups the aesthetic enhancement procedures and the periodontal splinting composite inlays and you can use it for the repair of uh, old composite restoration and the non carious lesion that ha happens as a result of uh, the at the margins of the tooth at the gingival margins and you can use it in uh, uh, to treat the case of uh, enamel hypoplasia okay Okay, the contraindications are uh, that it is uh, difficult to uh, isolate the tooth in the posterior region um, where you can not prevent the cavity and the composite itself getting contaminated. Or uh, the, if the person has a history of uh, poor oral hygiene and the high caries index and the habit is uh, like bruxism. Now the advantages of this, it's uh, aesthetically pleasing and it's uh, bound to the tooth structure, uh, not mechanically, but micromechanically. And it is it is repairable. No health hazard has been seen so far. And uh, in it, it can con conserve the tooth structure uh, in a way that you can, you have to remove the defected effect uh, area only. You don't have to remove the uh, whole thing like you have to form a retention form uh, in like you have to do in uh, amalgam restoration and it is less complex now the disadvantages is first of all polymerization shrinkage and the technique is uh, sensitive like you have to uh, follow the each step and procedure quite carefully um, to do it properly and it is time consuming and the second uh, and the third the fourth thing is uh, staining it stains uh, a lot easier than any other uh, restoration and it is costly now here's the important thing uh, we have talked about the composite restoration composite resin but without the enamel and dentil adhesion uh, composite like it's it's the playground where the composite will play these are the two main things that the enamel and dentine adhesion. So the first thing that uh, comes is the acid etch technique. Like the mechanism is the uh, mechanism is the resin micro tag formation. And how will it be formed? Let me show you that. Okay. So imagine in the first uh, image is that uh, you have prepared a cavity, right? And all of the debris. Uh, from cutting, cutting from the uh, burr that are accumulated in the um, porosities that are present in the enamel and the dentine, right? So what you will do is uh, you'll apply, you'll apply etching, 
which uh, comes in a concentration of uh, 37. Now, here's the thing you can use uh, from 30 to 50 percent of the phosphoric acid of concentration uh, in HN. But the most is uh, suitable is 30 percent, 37 percent of the phosphoric acid and in the gel form because you can easily work uh, with it. And the reason you cannot use uh, beyond the 50% uh, of the phosphoric acid is that it will uh, form the monocalcium phosphate uh, layer, which is uh, quite difficult to remove. So if you're using like uh, more than 50% of the phosphoric acid to etch the enamel or dentin, it will lead to the formation of uh, more thicker layer than the semia layer itself and it will be quite hard to get it off. So you'll apply the etchin onto the uh, area for 15 seconds and then wash it off. What it does is uh, it increases the free surface energy. It uh, will remove the, uh, it will demineralize a structure and, be, and made it rough and formed uh, like you have heard about the inner Enamel tags, which is which is like this, and when the primer flows in, when the adhesion flows in, it will interlock like this, and it will form a bond. Just as as you can see in the this picture D, the bonding about the chemical bonding, physical bonding, and mechanical bonding. Right. So you have as the uh, enamel, and you have as the dentine. Now what you have done with the dentine is that uh, the structure of the dentine uh, has uh, the collagen fibers which are exposed due to the etching. Now, you don't have to, uh, you know, bone dry it like desert. So while doing that, you can, uh, you can disrupt the structure of uh, the dentine, which are, wait a minute. You can disrupt the uh, structure of dentine that uh, the uh, the collagen fiber will collapse, and uh, it will get quite hard to incorporate the adhesive material or the primer to go into the microporosities or into the dentinal tubule uh, to form the resin tag formation, which is also known as the hybrid layer. I will show you the picture later in this uh, uh, in the slides to get your concept more clear. And the third thing is the stress at the resin dentin interface. So you have the uh, micro tags and you have allowed the uh, adhesive to sweep into the micro tags um, with the help of the capillary action. And when you cure it, it will also exhibit because it is also a resin that is flowable, not like composite that is packable, but it's more uh, flowable. So it gets also the C factor. It also has the C factor and the polymerization shrinkage, uh, which will be the stress uh, barrier at the resin and dentine interface. So here's the classification of the adhesive. The first three classification uh, were quickly uh, removed from the uh, practice because uh, they didn't give the desirable uh, results. So starting from the, okay. So we'll be starting it from the, from the fourth generation there are two systems that uh, uh, comes enamel dentine bonding system. The first thing is uh, the etch and rinse system and then the self etch system. Like you don't have to remove the etch in, uh, in order to, okay, in order to uh, remove the 
similar layer. Okay. So for the edge and run system, both the fourth and fifth generation, they both uses uh, that uh, syringe that comes, uh, that blue stuff that comes in a syringe. Uh, it's in a gel form. It's a 37% of phosphoric acid that we apply to the uh, that we apply to the uh, surface yet for uh, etching and but in fourth generation we use the primer separately we use the primer separately and then we apply the adhesive but in the fifth generation uh, which is the most common which is the most common um, generation that we're using in our uh, hospital setup or in our clinical setup that we uh, that it came in a single bottle that we apply with the brush uh, onto the surface so here's the thing that once you etch the tooth you don't have to bone dry it because the moist uh, adhesion is uh, found to be effective you don't have to be you don't have to dry it uh, that it will appear as a chalky that will do the uh, that will disrupt the uh, the collagen fiber and the collagen structure of the dentine it will be hard uh, for the primer to get into the microporosities that we have created from the uh, etching so in the self etching system there is the acid primer and then the adhesive so you don't wash it off you just apply both the liquid and then place the composite and in the seventh generation you just apply it and it will self etch and the primer and the bond and the adhesive so you don't have to uh, wash it off okay so i have explained it that first you will remove the smear layer uh, then you'll apply the uh, bonding agent which also have the primer in it and then you'll um, cure it to form a hybrid layer and then you'll apply the composite uh, in increments to avoid uh, here this is uh, the sentinel tubule and this is the smear layer so when you apply the etching over it for first it exposes the collagen fibers of the dentine all right so it will apply the adhesion uh, for uh, the composite to get along so here apply the uh, dentine adhesive that comes in a bottle so it will form a hybrid layer so this is a hybrid layer you have the dentine uh, collagen fibers and uh, the dentine adhesive it will form the uh, hybrid layer and then you'll apply the composite on the top So the uh, final thing is uh, the polishing. Yeah. Finishing and no one ever do it. Okay, the forbidden art. So we have few system uh, that are used uh, for the finishing and polishing. The first is that you can use uh, uh, the Fisher burr to for the contouring of uh, the tooth. Then you can use the polishing disc that comes uh, in uh, four different um, sizes according to their function. The first is uh, the course that does the gross reduction. Uh, uh, of uh, the tooth and then this then there is the medium um, polishing uh, disc that does this uh, countering of the uh, tooth then the finishing and and at the last with the, the super fine which is used for the polishing so the colors may be different according to the companies uh, but they'll uh, do give you this uh, a chart referring to the function of each disc 
so the first system is this and the other finishing system uh, that we use are the silicon uh, cup the silicon wheel and the silicon point and the polishing cup they, these all are used without paste or you can use it with the, if you want uh, to have the extra polish obviously that that's there is no harm in that These are the spiral brushes uh, that are useful uh, for the polishing of the posterior tooth uh, because uh, it has a certain type of uh, these, uh, these spiral uh, structures that can go into the groove and uh, polish it uh, very well. Okay. So thank you very much. Uh, this is it. If you have uh, any question, I would uh, love to answer them. Hmm, sir, it was a very good lecture. Coffee uh, nights, I'm a patalagi and cast of the mujer. The parani patati. A chap. Ab ye hake saval saval agar kisi ka hai to kindly koi bi push le sir se live chat ke andar. Sir, ek to balke beach me saval hai bithe ab dra sprawl ke dek sa bithe. Ek kisi ne saval upar kiya tha ke ye polymerization ke wale se. Uh, Emma Daud, kindly um, type your question. Uh, I hope so, sir. Will be back in a one one a minute. So, you post your post. Emma Nisar, composite better hai, amalgam for posterior. I think so. Uh, composite is not better because if you ask me, I will say that amalgam is better. Hai. Amalgam ki apni mechanical strength zada better hai aur masticate bhi forces ko 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 jo load bear karne wali uski na capacity zada better hai. Piche masticate bhi forces hume required hoti hain. So I think so. Uh, amalgam is far more superior than the composite in posterior while filling. Baki agar aapko interiors mein karni hai, to yes, composite is very good and and I would also always prefer composite on uh, amalgam. Uh, because uh, aesthetics ke liye composite is very best baki ye hai ke uh, composite bhi hum procedure mein kar sakte hain aisa nahi hai to filling aap dono kar sakte hain lekin agar masticate uh, forces ko karenge to uh, uh, there there uh, there was uh, there is very best theek hai uske liye amalgam best hai acha i i think so sir शायद चलेंगे हैं ठीक है बाकी ये है कि क्वेश्चंस आप लोगों अगर है तो मुझे पे दीजिए आई विल आस्क सर एंड ही विल फुलफिल योर क्वेरी और आई होप सो आज का लेक्चर सब अच्छा सही सही रहा है सबको बेहतर है कोई भी फीडबैक देना चाहे तो आप अपनी इसमें दे सकते हैं सी फैक्टर वेयर द सेकंड आई सर कैन यू Back for queries. ठीक है सर के नेट में कोई इशू आ गया तो आप अपने सवाल यहाँ पे कर दें पोस्ट आई विल इंशाल्लाह फॉरवर्ड टू देम एंड ही विल लेट यू नो 
सी फैक्टर हाँ सी फैक्टर का रोल पोलिमराइजेशन शिंकेज में मेरे ख्याल से असर बता रहे थे जिस तरह के नंबर ऑफ अनबॉन्डेड बॉन्डेड एरियाज के मुताबिक जितना ज्यादा होगा बाकी सर आ गया एक सेकेंड सर काइंडली ना ये कुछ सवाल हैं आई होप सो आपको नजर आ रहे होंगे लाइव चैट में तो सर इनका काइंडली जवाब दे दें एक सी फैक्टर के बारे में पूछा है अहमद दाऊद ने कि सी फैक्टर क्या चीज है तो वो बता दें आप सी फैक्टर जो है वो रेशो है बाउंडेड और अनबाउंडेड सरफेसेस के दरमियान में जितना ज्यादा होगा उतनी पोलिमराइजेशन श्रिंकेज होगी लाइक क्लास वन कैविटी में जो अगर आप देखें तो आपके पास सिर्फ एक अनबाउंडेड सरफेस होती है जो आपकी अक्लूजल सरफेस होती है ठीक है और जो बाकी आपके पास चार सर्फेसेस पांच सर्फेसेस आती हैं वो आपके पास बाउंडेड होती हैं ठीक है तो उसके सी फैक्टर जो है वो रेशो है बाउंडेड अनबाउंडेड और बाउंडेड सर्फेसेस के दरमियान में तो वो जितना ज़्यादा होगा तो पोलिमराइजेशन श्रिंकेज उतनी ज़्यादा होगी क्योंकि डेंटिन के साथ जो कॉम्पोजिट है उसको बाउंडिंग सर्फेसेस इतनी ज़्यादा मिली हुई हैं कि जब पोलिमराइजेशन श्रिंकेज होगी सेंटर की तरफ तो वो सारे वॉल्स के ऊपर स्ट्रेस डालेगा तो जिसकी वजह से जो है पोलिमराइजेशन श्रिंकेज ज़्यादा होगी और बाउंड डिस्ट्रप्शन के चांसेस ज़्यादा होते हैं ठीक हो गया सर ये एक और सवाल था कि पुशीरियत तीर्थ में फिलिंग वाइज रिस्टोरेशन वाइज कम्पोजिट बेहतर है या मलगम तो ये भी बता दें एस्थेटिकली अगर आप देखें तो एस्थेटिकली मलगम बेहतर नहीं है कम्पोजिट बेहतर है और अगर आप फंक्शनली पता करना चाहते हैं मतलब अगर चाहते हैं फंक्शनली कौन सा बेहतर है तो मलगम उसमें जो है फंक्शनल लिहाज से ज़्यादा बेहतर है क्योंकि वो कम्पोजिट से ज़्यादा स्ट्रॉग है ठीक हो गया सर इसके अलावा ऊपर एक सवाल था कि पोलिमराइजेशन एक्टिवेट पोलिमराइजेशन एक्टिवेट विद ओनली लाइट एज यू सेड व्हाट फैक्टर एक्टिवेट पोलिमराइजेशन ऑन सेल्फ सेटिंग कंपोजिट ये एक सवाल है सर ओके okay, इसमें भी जिस तरह लाइट क्योर में कंपोनेंट्स हैं उसी तरह जो आपके टू पे सिस्टम आता था उसके अंदर भी एक कैटलिस्ट होता है एक एक्ट और एक बेस होती है जो वो दोनों मिलते हैं उनमें ही एक आई डोंट नो मुझे उसका नाम नहीं पता है आई एम सॉरी फॉर दैट लेकिन उसमें भी एक केमिकल है जो कि एक्टिवेशन करता है इसकी और आपके पास बहुत कम वर्किंग टाइम होता है उसको आप कैवि मतलब आप उसको वर्क कर सको बाहर उठा के कैविटी में डाल सको हेलो ठीक है ठीक है सर सर ये एक और सवाल आया ये देख लें एस्थेटिक्स और उसके वाले से चेक कर लें स्टैटिक भी मेंटेन करनी हो अगर स्टैटिक और फंक्शन uh, दोनों मेंटेन करना है तो पोस्टीरियर में कंपोजिट नथिंग कंपोजिट जो है वो ज्यादा होगी क्योंकि जीआईसी स्टैटिकली uh, इतना प्लीजिंग नहीं है ठीक हो गया लाइक इट और ये कंपोजिट हम्म हाँ. और अगर किसी का कोई सवाल है तो सर से पूछ ले कमेंट सेक्शन में वो लाइव चैट में तो सर विल आंसर द क्वेरी बाकी आ, कोई फीडबैक देना चाहे लेक्चर के हवाले से आज दे सकता है सर को सर दो मिनट बस देख लें रुक लें अगर आ जाए तो ठीक है बंदा फिर एंड करते हैं आज का
सर ये अहमद दाऊद का ही सवाल है कह रहा है कि मलगम ओवरऑल बैन हो रही है ड्यू टू टॉक्सिटी और पता नहीं इसके बारे में पूछना चाह रहे हैं और रहील ने पूछा है कंपेयर टू मलगम टू जी तो जी आई सी बेटर है ही है मतलब मलगम से कंपेयर किया जाए तो जी आई सी बेटर है कुछ इस तरह पूछा अच्छा सबसे पहले जो मेलगम टॉक्सिसिटी की बात आ, की गई है नॉर्मल जो डेली डोजेज जो है हम लोगों की आ, वो थर्टी माइक्रोग्राम तक जो है मेलगम की मरकरी की जो है वो सेफ है ठीक है तो ये आपके डेली लाइफ में आप जो भी चीज़ें खा पी रहे हैं उनके अंदर भी मरकरी होता है तो ये इतना तो आपको हार्मफुल इफेक्ट नहीं करता और रही बात अगर आपके पास मल्टीपल रेस्टोरेशन हैं आपके मुँह में मेलगम की तो वो भी कंबाइन मिलाकर भी जो है ना सेवन माइक्रोग्राम से ज़्यादा का मरकरी डेली बेसिस पे रिलीज नहीं करते जो कि एक सेफ लिमिट से बहुत ज़्यादा नीचे तो बैन नहीं हो रही है इसका कोई इस तरह का मसला नहीं ठीक है सर और दूसरा तो ये पूछे थे कि कंपेयर टू मलकम टू जी आई सी बेहतर ही है इन एस्थेटिक्स एस्थेटिक्स में मेरे ख्याल से यस वही है जी आई सी बेटर है मलगम से लेकिन कंपोजिट uh, से बेहतर नहीं ठीक हो गया सर आई गेस आज के लिए सिर्फ इतने सवाल थे थैंक यू सर इट वाज अ वेरी ग्रेट लेक्चर और आपने बड़ा अच्छा टाइम निकाला और हमें दिया और बड़ा अच्छा सम, uh, काफी इंफॉर्मेटिव नई नई चीजें बताई थैंक यू सर आने के लिए और इंशाल्लाह फिर उम्मीद है फिर आपसे किसी दिन मुलाकात होगी इंशाल्लाह 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 थैंक यू सर ठीक हो गया खुदा हाफिज खुदा हाफिज